Okay guys, opportunity to test out some hand loads that I had in 6.5 PRC and 6.5 um, Creedmoor. And I'd like to my results and what we're going to do tonight, we're going to revisit Super Performer. Or super, super Performance. I just can't say that for nothing. Originally I started with Hodgson's 4350. I got good results. I was never happy with the speed, but guess what? You can't find this anywhere right now. So then I had found some Reloader 16. Was not happy with it. Hit pressure before published max and discontinued its use, use because I'm just not, I was not happy with it. Okay. I was getting good groups with this. But anyways, the only powder I could find at Bass Pro Shop when I went out west hunting was this Hodgson Super Performance. Um, it says it is rocket science. And they brag that you will get 100 feet per, uh, 100 feet per second more with this powder than any other that is today's results. Oh, and I've, I've quit buying the shoot and see targets. Oh, so when you have a target like this, it is really difficult to line those crosshairs up precisely. Yeah, it's, it's neat when it changes colors when you have bullet impacts, but I had no problem seeing my bullet impacts. 127 grain LRXs. Okay. Super performance. Winchester cases. Winchester primers started at 44 grain had a lot of lateral stringing was not real happy with it this is also cold bore shot but just wasn't happy i mean it's just so so but anyways let the rifle cool down for 30 minutes or so then i went to 45 grains that is five shots and i pulled that one so we have four bullet holes right there awesome group just totally awesome see this is a different powder than this one this rifle was zeroed for 4350 we go to super performance look at the elevation difference and the only change was powder then i went to 45.4 look at the lateral stringing i got look at this even missed when I shot this first round, it felt like a shotgun. And I had already shot my 25-06, what, 15 times, done shot these 10 times, and I make this shot, and it felt like a shotgun. So I wasn't imagining it, but I thought maybe I was. So I took a shot once again. Hit here. Felt like a shotgun. The brass has no primer flattening, no ejector swipe no nothing i have no pressure signs so i'm like whatsoever. i just feel like i've shot a 12 gauge twice like a fool i shoot it a third time same thing no sticky bolt no heavy lift to the bolt no nothing no pressure signs it just feels like a shotgun paul thinks i'm crazy for shooting it again actually i think that was just these two shots i remarked about it feeling like a shotgun I shoot again, and he's telling me I'm crazy for shooting it, and then I shot and ended up there. Look at that lateral string. Well, elevation's still pretty good, but anyways, it feels like a 12 gauge. And that is just four, a 0.4 grains over there. And I wasn't sure, because I didn't have a manual with me for what I loaded. Don't you like my Barnes, homemade Barnes manual? Anyway, here is your load for your Creedmoor. 4350 and look down here at the bottom super for super formus okay 45 grains it's a compressed compressed load and that is max so from here 0.4 grains feels like a shotgun so anyways that's what we're going to revisit today we're going to load up some more 45s we're going to load up some 44.8 maybe. I don't know. And I don't know if I'm going to go on the other side or not. 
maybe 45.1 or 45.2 I don't know but we're going to load up typically I like to go to either side when I start finding a node like that typically I'd want 45.1 or 2 and 44.8 but we're going to load up like 15 right around this area here and see if we can continue the accuracy to 44.8 or 44.9 but i'm really worried anything past there i have no pressure sign but it feels like it so started looking at my cards from the last time i shot see i make notes feels like a shotgun okay and i was pretty impressed with the speeds i even hit 28 2800 2800 well, that, that one was the one that was giving me my pressure. And I didn't know how to use my chronograph correctly. I didn't realize my chronograph will give me my SDs. But see, up there when I was over pressure, I had SD of 72. An extreme spread of 153. Man, it went crazy. So anyways, I get to looking at the speeds comparing them to last time when I shot um, with 4350 and come to find out I am definitely I am 50 to 100 feet per second 100 feet per second faster than 4350 and these were the two cards that I had two really good groups here I had once again three bullets in the same hole let's see see the speed <laughs> We're going to revisit this and we're going to see if we can fine tune this load. I'm pretty impressed with this powder. Although I hate to load it, it is like glitter. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to wipe off all the writing on here with a paper towel with rubbing alcohol. I keep track of how many times this brass has been shot. My code for that is this has been shot twice. And it was 45 grains of super performance LRX. Somebody commented on my page the other day that this is, looks like a rat nest of a workspace. Well, you know what? It is. But it's just a corner of a garage. And I do more work on cars and stuff. And all you need is this little cubicle right here. All I need is a press. And we're just going to take us a little tiny bit of lube there. And go around here. I usually don't lube every single round, but that, that PRC stuck case really bothered me because I never had one like that happen. You do want to take a little bit and go inside and around this neck, especially the first one, but you don't want to get it on the shoulder. All right, I set my die up. So that I bump the shoulder back two thousandths of an inch. A temperator, I measure, I measure it. it measures from here to here. And I, I measure it, and then I bump, put my die down, and I want to bump it two thousandths of an inch. And if you don't know how to do that, if you watch my other videos, I have one on how to do it. That was awful tight. I think I'm going to work this load up. I might load up eight on each each grainage of powder. I don't know. Paul today was trying to shoot a, three rounds at each target and then take a picture of his tightest group, which, in my opinion, is not accurate. You need to shoot at least a five round group just because you got lucky and got three rounds in the red and then you want to post it on Facebook what kind of rounds you're getting. Um, I think it needs to be at least a five shot group and I like to shoot more like a seven shot group. That's how you get an idea how it's behaving not just your best Put up five targets and your best three 
put up five targets and shoot three round groups and then brag about your best target when some of them are nothing to be proud of. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, I'm going to do like 25, 30 of these. And I'll get right back at you. Just, just bumping the shoulder back 2000s. I don't know if you saw this in my other videos, but once I clean my brass, I take a towel with rubbing alcohol, clean the lube off, and I always write a code in here. This these this brass has been shot twice now. I bought this on eBay. Don't know what it's called or anything, but it's a case trimmer. But I don't mean there's my other case trimmer, and I don't feel like messing with it. This thing is so cool. And if you want, you can even hook it to an electric drill. It's just a piece of nylon that's been cut to match this. And it's got a drill bit that's been put in there. And you just put your case there and turn. And you can instantly see, of course, this, this is Starline Brass. I was wrong. I think I said Winchester earlier. This is Starline Brass. And I have yet, this is going on the third and fourth firing of over half the cases that I checked half of them had to be trimmed so now we need to take the VLD tool and do that and then we're going to deburr the outside on each one of those you can tell when you go trimming them they'll be shiny and they'll lose the, the taper on the inside see how shiny that is you can tell by feel with that hand tool if it's cutting or not. And then if you do that, you need to recut that inside. To prime them, we're going to come in here where it's warmer because that garage is not heated anymore. I don't use kerosene anymore and it's like 10 degrees outside. So all you got to do is take your trimmed cases. They've been cleaned. I've marked how many times they've been shot. See, this one's been shot twice. I, I keep track of the number of firings. And you just stick them in a number three shell holder. And the reason I like uh, Winchester primers, look how far that's fully seated. Uh, when I was doing the PRC using CCI primers, I was having to bear it. I mean, as far as it would go. And when you pull it out, you want to run your finger across there. And you should have one to two thousandths. And you could real, I could tell the difference between the CCI. The CCI was going maybe three or four thousandths. I was concerned with how deep it was going, and I didn't. I've never run into that with federal primers, um, but I think it has to do with the P, uh, PRC uh, cases more than anything. So, it's that, it's that simple. Just go like that. Seated. Wear safety glasses. I've never had one go off, but. Okay, we're ready to load. This is what I'm going to load. I'm going to load 45, 44.9, 44.8, 45, 44.7, 44.6 in half and a tenth of a grain increments. And that should give me the accuracy I'm looking for. Um, not going to do an electronic scale. My electronic scale isn't accurate enough. We're going to go back to this one, which is a lot more accurate. And this is going to take a while. I'm not going to video it. I was getting three bullets in the same hole at 45, and I want to see how far I can go. And I don't know how much powder this is going to use, but it's going to use a half a box of bullets, Barnes bullets. They only come in 50 to a box, and for the same price, and... You get a hundred fusions for the price of so fifty barns, but that's how much I like these barns bullets. My favorite bullet. So in this is why I was not a big fan of this powder. I want you to look at the size of those kernels. I'll, I much rather have a extruded stick powder. I mean, look at the size of that. And if you spill that, it's like it's like glitter. And I did. See, that's why I'm putting paper down. Now, 
I think glitter is bigger than this stuff is. Part of advice, always go over your cases with a bright light and make sure that the fill can pass it, that make sure they're all filled. And at 45, this is a compressed load. We're going to be crunch. It's going to sound like Rice Krispies when we. Okay, guys, we're down to the final step, seating the bullets. Pay attention to what you're doing. Don't have the radio going on. Don't have no TV, no nothing. I hadn't pulled my, pulled the, I haven't pulled the LRX bullets out here. And I had some ELD bullets here, and I get to loading, and I just loaded a couple in EDLs. Now I got to pull them off. So my best advice on how to seed up, set up your die, is make sure that you've got a round, get a round you're happy with, and designate it as a master round. And it doesn't matter the powder charge. LRX is, this is the seating depth I want. Okay? And load chart here, and we have it all written down. We want 2.75. So when we go to put our die in, I had to make sure it was the right one. But you'll just have it loose here. Run it up. Run it down. Make sure it's the right bullet until it's touching right and that's the proper way that's the easiest way to set your die is to have a master round sitting here whenever i load a bullet the hornady dies i don't think you got to worry about this because of that thing hanging down but on these rcbs's to help with run out i always seat it a little bit turn it seat a little bit send it home okay now we should have 2.75. 2.75, right on the money. See, that's just, it's just a variation in the tip there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these and we'll be done and go to the range and... Oh, buddy! Just great! I don't know if I'm even going to be able to get to my spot. Look at this. Oh, man. We are getting really close. I might not be able to get out of here. I mean, if this water comes up another foot. I'll be stranded until it goes back down when I when I get down here to our. When I get down here to the hunt lease. 